Welcome back to another episode on Front Row on Economy.LK. Uh, we have the pleasure to have with us Dulit Herath, who is the founder, CEO of uh, Caprica. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, Dulit, I just want to cover a few ish, um, topics I think that our viewers will find very useful uh, in the space that you operate. But broadly, if I was to look at it in a more uh, holistic picture, we're seeing a lot of business models uh, coming out, um, companies that are already in business, having to change their business models, newer companies that are born in the digital age, bringing out more models. If you could briefly probably elaborate on some of these uh, business models that are taking place and... Um, well, the, it's, I'm talking, going to talk about digital business models, right? So business models being changing from donkey's age, right? Yeah, so the, the, the carriage has got replaced by cars, you no know, cars are replaced by etc, etc, etc. But I'm talking about really digital business models such as e-commerce, for example. I mean, e-commerce is a digital business model that comes and disrupts retail, right? And if you look at Uber, it is a digital business model that comes to disrupt taxis, right? So if you look at Booking.com, same, same thing. So they are only going to keep increasing and there's so much of opportunity there but the most important part about when you're building digital business model is the virality of it really right what i mean by that is the i mean why are we adopting some of the tools that we are using today right the virality factor is is, is very important in that um, and there are two or three models that i can quickly elaborate on one is a free business model which is facebook right you, none of us are paying for it but it's valued at so much and they make their money other ways. And then there is a shared economy business model, which is uh, Google, right? When you search for something, you know, they show you an ad, but you get the items free, but it's an economy of reviews and so many factors like this. So there are multiple digital business models that are in play today and they're being adopted. Do you think uh, Sri Lankan businesses that are in the digital economy field are um, maybe unaware of some of these models or not really plugging into them or I think just the biggest gap is they don't realize this specific name digital business model they think of it like okay if you look at a retail shop they'll be like uh, hey I need to go online that's all they think they don't necessarily understand this is a real new business model I need to do everything from costing to rest of the whole thing from scratch so they they don't get i think the most important part is it is a very different animal we are talking about you need to kind of holistically understand what a digital business model is and then compare your existing business to that and then adapt to it then just pick a piece of it and you know try that sure. and more closer to i think what you do in terms of e-commerce um, i think the numbers put it at about a 30 to 40 million dollar market um, some of the statistics that show when, it's only about 100 actually. Um, yeah, so, um, but if you look at the region and some of the yeah. other countries, there is exponential growth that we can right. really um, move towards. Um, A, what is really maybe holding us back from that? And when will we really see this uh, take off? Yeah, so as the e-commerce market in Sri Lanka is hovering around $75 million to $100 million in, my, in using our data. Um, you know, like grasshoppers, you know, we, we see the big picture. It's, we are still on the runway. It has not taken off yet, right? If you look at most countries in the region, it, they, they keep on the runway for a certain time and at one point it takes off. And if you check why it took off, it's always because of a huge investment, right? Somebody coming and start putting a lot of money in e-commerce in Sri Lanka and then it just takes off. So I think we have all the right conditions now. So I mean, why we started all the grasshoppers was also being ready for that. You know, somebody's going to come in and, you know, burn big money here and then they need a logistics player. So uh, the, the, there, are, there are no other limitations in Sri Lanka. If, I, if you look at an African country or if you look at some other L LDCs, they're far behind. Even if the money comes, the country is not ready. In our case, we are on the runway. That's why we are doing 75 to 100 million dollars now. And the, when the money comes, it will do the hockey stick. Right. And I think you briefly mentioned grasshoppers, but um, in terms of that last mile delivery and even being an uh, enabler in the ecosystem of the growth of uh, e-commerce, how, how much of, um, how, how has that evolved? And, it's, uh, I mean, it's a very important piece. I mean, today Amazon what would not be there if not for UPS, right? Nobody was there to do the heavy lifting 
for Amazon. So it's a very important piece of e-commerce. And I, I see this as a, I, I saw this two years ago and that's why we you know, heavily invested into Grasshoppers and you know, set it all up. Now I am seeing not the big boys really using Grasshoppers, it's really the SME, small fellows, uh, you know, selling products on Facebook, on Instagram, etc. And just operating out of their homes and garages but using the fulfillment service to deliver their product anywhere in the island. And there's a huge demand for e-commerce products from other cities. So we are, you know, we are all very Western province, Columbus centric, right? But you know, there are big four to three towns in Sri Lanka, right? Ratnapura to Matra to Gaul to Anuradhapura to... There are 43 big towns in Sri Lanka where there's a higher demand for e-commerce. Because if you go to Ratnapura, the guy in Ratnapura has very limited choice of things he can buy in his town. But now on his, you know, mobile app, on any, any kind of a shopping website in Sri Lanka, he sees 150,000 SKUs. So it's about that grasshopper being able to do the delivery to him and collect the cash because these are not credit card users. So cash on delivery is a very important piece, uh, a feature that we built onto the grasshopper. Without that, we are same as DHL or you know, UPS. Thank you so much, Dorit, for being on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, and for our viewers, I think we got um, a great idea in terms of some of the business models that are in the digital economy space. And you've heard it uh, from one of the leaders in this space uh, in Sri Lanka uh, in terms of where e-commerce will actually uh, go towards in the next uh, months and maybe years ahead. Um, so stay tuned for more episodes like this on Front Row on economy.lk.